Well, thanks to last year's Christmas episodes, I've got a bunny costume sitting around, so might as well wear it and talk about something Easter-related when I'm not hiding eggs for Christ. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> what are we gonna watch? The Ten Commandments? Prince of Egypt? The Easter Puppy? Haha, <laughs> no. Some movie from 2014 called Beaster Day. Here comes Peter Cottontail. I bet it's just like the Easter Bunny that overslept by Priscilla and Otto Friedrich. That's why the bunny is so angry. He gets a little groggy when he oversleeps and then goes around and kills people. Yes, this is one of those horror movies where a holiday-related monster is attacking a small town. Just imagine you're watching Jack Frost and thinking, yeah, it's pretty good and all, but I kinda wish he was a big bunny. The movie is written and directed by John Backus, who as it turns out, coincidentally, this is the third movie of his I've featured on the show. I've done so many episodes on here that when I glanced at the title of his 2002 movie, Playmate of the Apes, I was seriously wondering, did, did I do an episode on that? The title sounds familiar, but I honestly can't remember if I did or not. Am I confusing it with Brazilian Planet of the Apes? Oh no, I did an episode on it. Plus, he also did the shot on Shidio movie, the bloody video horror that made me puke on my Aunt Gertrude. Now that one I remember. It's impossible to forget that title. But this movie had better have a killer Easter bunny because that film did not have anyone puking on Aunt Gertrude. And it's from Uncorked Entertainment. I recognize this from every VOD movie released in the past few years. This doesn't seem so scary. They're leaving eggs for Christ's return. <laughs> Oop, you left out the ones from last year. They're getting a little moldy. We'll save those for the Antichrist. Wait, directed by the Pseudonym Brothers? You can't fool me. I know this is the director of Mad Maxine Frisky Road. What is happening here? Am I just watching someone's wedding video? Hey, everybody, how we doing? All right, good? Look at how I'm dressed. I'm doing terrible. If you ask me, these speeches need to be a whole lot drunker. Hey, if I do the Hokey Pokey one more time, I'm going to fucking blow my brains out. Dad! Is that how it went when they pitched Beaster Day? Give it up for this man. He's sticking up for his mom, who his dad left to marry someone younger. I uh, just saw mom last week. Uh, she, I saw her at the days in. She's doing just fine. Probably turning tricks for money. You know, I... And he's defending his mom by calling her a whore! This must be a really packed wedding. He's saying terrible things in his speech, but there's no sound from the audience till the end when people in the background still have no reaction. I should have worn a condom, the little shit. Just as Heavenly Father said to Christ when he only tipped 5% at the Last Supper. But as you do when you get drunk at a wedding, you go home hitchhiking. It's an older movie. Cabs and Ubers hadn't been invented yet. He's gonna miss the cutting of the cake, featuring shots from a local bakery ad on TV. Oh no, they got the cherry topping everywhere! I don't know what's grosser, drunk son getting killed by giant rabbit, or these two eating cake. Well, if this isn't our hero, then who is? <laughs> he already seems obnoxious. Say, what other movies remind me of killer bunnies and stuffing your pants? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Oh, taxi driver, obviously. Everyone in this movie is gonna be annoying, aren't they? Like breakfast food couple, serving up a nice plate of insert shots. Oh, my senses are already being titillized. Now, come on, just one taste, please. Oh. oh, thank God, their robot is malfunctioning. How many damn characters are in this? Here's Bacon Dad's daughter being thrown out of living in some guy's van or something. So, have you gotten any acting gigs lately? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're in Beaster Day. It's important that I still throw shade when dressed like this. 
She is having a much worse day. That's my stuff. See, that guy broke her sound effects machine. If these characters aren't enough, here's another one drinking a nice Long Island iced tea. Believe it or not, here's where we get our first shot of the monster. Holy shit, the Easter cockroach has risen! He may be giant, but it'll take you a minute to notice him. Not only is this the kind of movie where a character screams with their arms flailing, but I think the effect itself is malfunctioning. The car effect looked okay, though. Damn swords in front of the car cut her hand off. No sense in complaining, considering that's the most realistic part of the scene. Just like in Here Comes Peter Cottontail. But back to the dog catchers. Item 8 is simply this. It is against all company policy to shoot an animal who's gone up into a tree and wait for rescue. Why the hell would I want to live in this town anyway? If there isn't killer rabbits, there's an army going around shooting dogs? It's a good day for them. They're giving the award for Dog Catcher of the Year, where they obviously modeled the award after the Siskel and Ebert Awards after catching all of the dogs of the week. But it does get very sad, as he unfortunately did not win the award. Congratulations. Uh, for what? Dog Catcher of the Year? Probably because he bangs all of his awards after coating them in Alpo. Enough about that, we're getting ambitious here. Look, shovel cam! The bright side is, is that the rabbit may be huge, but he leaves parts of your carrots behind while completely wasting others. Bugs Bunny would never do such a thing. Look, we can use hundreds of carrots to make a trail, but a hole for the rabbit? Too difficult. Put it in and post. Same with the rabbit. Mmm, ah! if they weren't flailing their arms around and screaming, ah! I totally think they were taking this seriously. Especially since this scene is half shots of the rabbit and half close-up shots of her jiggling her tits in front of the camera after the rabbit rips off her shirt. Seriously. But don't take that as you need to jerk off to this. It ain't sexy. I'm more hungry than I am scared. See? Another breakfast vision scene. It's like watching a horror movie directed by someone who was inspired by Denny's commercials. You're already a failed actress, a failed opera singer a failed painter, and now you want to be a failed poet. And by someone whose father never believed in them and their pursuit of filming the perfect Grand Slam breakfast platter. I'm tired of seeing this guy's shtick of either insulting his daughter or talking about bacon. Cut to the next character, a horse. I'm starting to disbelieve what's happening here. Now the rabbit is only twice the size of a fence when before he was bigger than a house. Not a lot of consistency here. Otherwise, I totally think this was really happening. On the plus side, the horse seems perfectly okay with the girl being cut in half. See, that's the only thing that could have saved Bolero. Chopped up body parts riding a horse. Oh, phew, I was worried the plot lines wouldn't cross. She's now got a job as a dog catcher, where hopefully someone will catch her up on the jealousy over the trophy. Hey, buddy, let me give you a hand with that. Oh, it's okay. I, I can... No, I, I, I can... I you did that on purpose. I don't care. Wow, this scene is just gonna keep going, isn't it? I know I could pay attention. Now, at this point, I'm ready to move to North Korea, start some synchronized communist socialist dance squad. Besides, I don't drink. But I don't think it'd make any more sense if I did. And when we come back, these two are on a hike, and no sense in remembering anyone's name, it'll move on to the next set of characters before you memorize them. Rose said the waitress is so happy about my birthday, she's gonna hop all over! I said she'll spring for your dinner. Oh, I hope she's careful. She'll drop my free dinner at Lenny's. Denny's. Denny's! Get a free lunch or dinner on your birthday through 1991 at Denny's. 
now that we're back, we spent way more money on the nudity than we did the rabbit, so get your dicks out, people! While I can't show you her severed head stuck to her bent-over ass, here's plenty more shots of Peter Cottontail making an asylum film look like the MCU. Finally, a hero we can relate to. He's protecting what matters the most, his precious cigarettes. <laughs> Just kidding, he's gonna die anyway. <laughs> and the editing was also butchered. On to character number 536. He's so mean, he takes the kids' suckers away, then comes back and gives them the stick. Oh, also, he's the mayor. Hey, Mayor! Ah, can't you see I'm busy mayor in here, man? It's about the stop sign on Main Street. Don't believe me, I voted for Murray Hamilton. Not even the soundtrack makes sense. Is he gonna bang the trophies too? I think this mayor may be corrupt. I mean, donate to the town. How is the killer rabbit the most subtle thing in this? Look, it's a killer animal movie. You gotta have the character of the mayor who ignores the problem because of the big celebration that his kid drew and put on the fridge, apparently. Not that the citizens really care about the body parts anyway. Oh, I have to tweet about this. Special cameo from the writers of that last Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's okay, she got in one final YOLO message before her untimely passing. That'll end up on her tombstone. But back to the dog catchers. Makes sense this killer Easter Bunny movie would revolve around dogs. Next thing I know, I found myself surrounded by two pit bulls, two Rottweilers, two bull terriers, and two Shih Tzus. Yeah, everyone counts out the Shih Tzu, but they're wrong. Okay. Anyway, sky, boobs, rabbit. <coughs> this movie is starting to get repetitive. Oh good, I want to know more about this guy. Can't I hang out with the dead body for the rest of the movie? Okay, you broke me down, damn it! I found the police academy! Wait, he couldn't even get into police academy with this mugging? Hopping balloons! Pop! Pop! I understand his concerns. We have all been traumatized after seeing fun in Balloon Land. Furthermore, boobs, killer rabbits. In the last several days, we've had five separate massacres, including the Amish. <laughs> okay, that was pretty funny. All that was left of him was this giant wheel. On to the next dog catcher. The dog is on the prowl. Our prices to bring him back won't make you howl. He shares my enthusiasm. Can this guy be the lead? Too bad he's about to die. You and me, bunny! Sudden death! I miss the dignity and gory ambition of the killer Santa movies. Now they can mourn the death of the only character I actually liked. He's dead! He was torn to shreds by a pack of wild dogs! That's a different and way better movie! That... What are you doing? Well, if it is squirrels, I gotta protect my nuts. <sighs> I stand corrected. Dogs needed way more animal puns. You put the cat in catcher! And my god, did that man love pussy! Just like in Apocalypse Now. And we're all just the grocer, here to collect the bill. That's from Apocalypse Now. It's from Shut Your Lips Me! See? This movie copies all of the classics! This crime scene is terrible all around, the spirit Halloween exploded, and there's props everywhere! But meanwhile, we can't cancel the Easter celebration, and blah 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 giant egg. What's that? Whew! Thank God Mork received our distress call and he can help save the town from these flashback scenes of them eating bananas! Whatever, let's just sit around and listen to music and wait this movie out. Excellent. The same generic rock music that Jeff from Rocket's Your Decision listened to. She's one of our leads, though. She can't be killed. <laughs> 
Because he's gonna vomit on her. The law of averages says he's gotta say something funny at some point. Darling, what's wrong? Did you see a spider? I saw a severed foot. Well, maybe someone just lost it. Sure, that'll work. Okay, I know we're over halfway into the movie and it's still introducing new characters, but someone's gotta come in and clean up these terrible scenes. They are not doing their job. This scene is still terrible. I guess this is karma for all those chocolate rabbits I ate as a kid. Okay, that was pretty good. I guess he saved the scene. It'll be ruined, though, with another mayor scene. But I do admire how weird this actor's career is. This is John Paul Fidele, who has acted in things like Sex Hex, wrote Playmate of the Apes, but then did effects and makeup work on Predators from Dusk Till Dawn and Hatchet. As for the scene itself, he's trying to sell safety tools to fight whatever monster is in the woods. I summed it up pretty quick for a scene that goes on forever. It's depriving us from the more important scenes, like picking your nose with the thumbs up trophy. And I'm sure he's gonna die. Ah, don't remind me. I'm still a little full from eating the Amish for lunch. Well, okay, maybe some dessert. <laughs> Wait, where am I going here? Uh, sorry, I'm a little drunk. That's why I pitched the scene where suddenly he's in a tank. We can't actually operate the tank, though, so best eat you the old-fashioned way. After you've fallen onto your own award that kills you. Surprisingly, we've run out of budget. Let's just get post-production blood to cover your lower half up. And when we come back, more people eaten by a giant rabbit. Guess who's in town a little early this year? With his cream eggs from Cadbury. And now make you feel as if spring is just around the corner. Excellent. We're back. Is there stupid jokes? Now I'm stuck in this town that I hate with a bunch of backward hicks who think Beethoven's just a large dog. He's not? Okay, I can't get mad at a Beethoven reference. It does make the perfect triple feature with Taxi Driver and Apocalypse Now. He's the right person for the job, clearly. He also doesn't see the monster till it's behind him. Now he can solve the mystery of who is the rabbit eating? Also, so is he Peter Cottontail or not? They never actually call him this. I almost like the plot where they spend a lot of the movie thinking they're in a killer dog movie. I almost like. Because the movie is wildly insulting. Soon, my friends, the end of days will be coming. Like I told, soon, you must repent now. See, it's tarnishing the memory of the gory religious Ron Ormond movies. This part kind of works though, where he's just running around in a very 80 yard panic. Listen to me, giant killer buddy! Oh, oh, ah! But never mind him being beaten by the congregation, here's another long ass press conference from the mayor. The movie only has 13 minutes left. Might as well spend half of it with the asshole mayor rambling. Then we can finally get to the Easter celebration. Ugh, lame. This festival could use a giant killer rabbit. Oh, thank God he's here. Wait, no, what are you doing? The mass chaos isn't supposed to happen till it's nighttime, and everyone's drunk and starts wrecking shit. Will the death of the evil mayor be worth it? Nope. It seems like all you'd have to do is tip the rabbit over. It looks like it'd be hard for him to stand back up. Too bad our hero can't save them. He's locked away in an insane asylum. That was fast. But thankfully, we have breakfast parents. Come on, baby. <laughs> Squeal for mama. That's it. <laughs> I'll take my chances with the giant rabbit. Ooh, 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 this is gonna get epic. She's gonna get some guns, bust him out of the abandoned bathroom at the asylum, and dress him up as a giant carrot to lure in the rabbit. Wait a minute, this isn't epic at all. It was way better when South Park did it. Rod Schneider is a carrot, rated PG-13. 
this movie needs Rob Schneider. Then the monster remembers he's a rabbit and starts hopping around instead of walking like a giant zombie. They are going to have to come up with something really crafty to take down this beast. Or just shoot him a few times. That ought to take care of it. Now we can answer the important question of where the rabbit came from. How do you think the rabbit got so big? Why wouldn't I expect the end credits to also be awkward? Good lord, this movie was no Aunt Gertrude or Playmate of the Apes. Maybe, I don't know. I still can't remember this movie. Beaster Day is one of those monster horror films that is trying to be bad. It's intentionally got bad effects. So a majority of the jokes don't work, and the appeal of the terrible rabbit effects gets pretty old after a while. I will stick with monster movies like Blood Freak, which featured a man who turns into a turkey and kills drug dealers before being converted to Christianity. That movie was genuine, goddammit. But as far as Easter movie goes, it was the better giant animal movie than that baby Huey movie I watched. I don't belong anywhere. Though Beaster Day does make me wonder, should I have just taken my chances with Easter Bunny Kill Kill? It doesn't matter what movie I would have chosen, because my jacket would always have the better choice. Like, whoo, Thunder Warrior 2. If there isn't twice as many explosions, it will still somehow be awesome. Gotcha. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>